Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with Gummy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gummy. K Gummy, whatever you want to call me. It's been a hot I am um, uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has been. Uh I do art stuff. Uh, I don't know if we're allowed to swear, but uh, oh, absolutely. I yeah. Shane's one of my favorite characters. I like that he likes chickens, because I like chickens, so, uh... Let's... I don't know what to expect. Uh, you know, seeing the last one we read, I I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, God, you gave me, like, bad flashbacks. <laughs> the Blitz and, and Striker thing, my yeah, God. Yeah, <laughs> that was right... That was, like, right before the episode where Striker comes back, which is insane. Yeah, we called that shit. Oh, <laughs> In the worst it way. <laughs> Ooh, well, um, so I was looking through and I was like, well, we both like Stardew Valley, and I'm getting back into the Stardew Valley craze since uh, I'm LPing it now. So I was like, Let let's read something. I couldn't find a good Shane one that wasn't mature. <laughs> I guess I was yeah. like super down bad for Shane. But uh, I did oh, yeah. find a couple of uh, just like normal ones of Sebastian, which thank God. <laughs> awesome. I do like Sebastian. Yeah, everyone loves themselves a good emo boy. I love emo boys. Okay. <laughs> Who would like to start the prologue? Well, I'm at the. Hold on one second. I'm at the. It's called or Isolated, a Stardew Valley. <laughs> That's it. All right, and then the description reads, As June settles back into Pelican Town for a fresh start, she expects a calm and peaceful life to devote any haunting memories from the city. Little does she expect that the secrets lurking within the valley, along with the mysterious dark-haired boy who keeps himself isolated from, <laughs> from everything, that is, UNTIL HER. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, start reading this shit. Let's go right to the prologue. Alright, you want me to? Yeah, um... Oh, I have my little thing. Yeah. We can flip this. It's, uh, do well, you want to be the side that has the grimoire seal or the side that has the barcode? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I, I just found like this little thing to flip. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> point flip. Oh, barcode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, how did it land sideways? <laughs> what? All right, it's barcode. <laughs> okay, I is that mean I do it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Stardew Valley was not like I expected, but to be fair, I had low expectations compared to the city. I didn't expect this. As soon as I stepped off the bus, I was met with a fresh breeze that fluttered around me, wind caressing my cheek. If it were a warm greeting, this was a surprise. A stark contrast between the polluted airs of Zuzu City. I love Zuzu pets. The grass such natural and luscious grass was a bright green, and I had to squint my eyes to check if they were a figment of my imagination. An illusion to deceive my narrowed eyes. But they were real. Everything was real. Even the people were nice. Much to my surprise, I was expecting cold brutes absorbed with the idea of luxury. Ones that I familiarize myself with every day at work. One that I myself become. I have braced myself to put on my usual mask of hatred to face them. I felt that. Insane. This was all at Joja Corporations. A vile company that feasted on capitalism. Fuck capitalism. After, work <laughs> <laughs> After working there for so long, I knew I had to leave before I fully fallen into their snares. Knew that it wasn't the life I was meant to live. I always had this feeling within me that I was meant for something greater, bigger, and so I decided to move to Pelican Town to claim a piece of land that I inherited. My grandfather of- this is kind of just a summary of the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a summary. Oh, I, uh, okay, I guess if you guys aren't familiar, <laughs> my grandfather have passed of old age years ago, when I was still a little girl. I could barely remember him, only cloudy memories. A headache passed over me as I thought more about it. I couldn't remember Grandpa at all. Had it been so long? Had I been so indulged in my work that I forgot about my loved ones? Damn. <laughs> if you ever need help- 
<laughs> That's real sad that you've been like indulged so much and you're worried that you just forgot what your loved ones looked like or just like That's in ter- general. That's a, it's a sad start. Yeah, very. This game's pretty dark at the beginning though. <laughs> it is, yeah. Your grandfather just straight up dies and you're working yourself to the like the bone. <laughs> Damn. Good luck. Yeah. So I like the game though. It's a de- hashtag deep. Yeah. <laughs> You said you had to do something, or...? Hmm? Uh, am I continuing? Oh, I can go ahead and do this. <laughs> okay. If you ever need help with the farm, I can provide you with resources. I was brought back to my thought as the woman in front stepped... The woman in stepped in front of... Wait, <laughs> this is really, really <laughs> quick for you. If you can. I was brought back from my thought as the woman in step in front of me started going on about the town. <laughs> so I did read that right. <laughs> yeah. Robin, she said her name was, when she greeted me at the bus stop. She was the town's carpenter and spent every empty moment to imp- promote her shop. Her ginger hair, barely streaking with white from age, and enthusiastic face made me dislike her immediately. Wow. What? Why? Why? <laughs> That's really What's funny. Wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with ginger? Oh, they hate gingers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the funniest part is that when my boy started playing Stardew Valley, he was like, oh my gosh, she's so <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend loves uh, the redheads. Yeah. Me too, though. To be fair. Yeah, me too. I have to. I guess. <laughs> I didn't know why I had this sudden hatred for this kind of person. Perhaps it was because I loathed the idea of someone being so nice, knowing it could have never be like that. Now that's sad to be. Yes. <laughs> I also have a son, Sebastian. He's a bit shy and likes to keep to himself, but I'm sure you can warm up to him eventually, she added as she looked back at me. This conversation's so weird. <laughs> it's just like... It is a very strange... Oh, anyways, I have a son. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, I'm the carpenter. Anyway, I have a kid. <laughs> You'll get to know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll sure get to know him. Don't worry. <laughs> we sure will. I'll be sure to get to know him, I reply with an attempt to mimic her enthusiasm, but utterly failed. My voice only came out bored and monotone. Robin didn't seem to sense this and continued walking. If her son was anything like her, I made a mental note not to interact with him as much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what's wrong? I mean, we're judgmental. <laughs> uh, I guess they, they'll make a good fit. Yeah. Together we walked along the road that led to what I assume was the farm. I saw a bit of the town center and marveled at all the sights. Finally, the road ended and a small ranch came into view. Mm-hmm. My heart was beating with anticipation as we ne- neared closer. Ah, oh, shit. Damn it. How do you pronounce that? Sir, <laughs> like a crescendo. Yeah, a crescendo, gradually increasing until its climax. We what? stopped, and my mouth hung open. Yeah, I don't know what that word means. I'll look it up later. <laughs> Watch it be like something like erotic as hell. Yeah, I'm like right. <laughs> Here it is, Suncrest Farm. I had pictured perfectly trimmed grass loitering across the farm where I would walk bare feet on. Picture tall trees side by side, home to little animals. Picture glistening water where you can make out your reflection and smile. But this? I did not expect this. (laughs) (laughs) It was as if a beast had crawled through the farm and tore apart every single form of life, leaving nothing in its path. Dead grass and wildflowers filled the path, making the ground bearably visible. The trees were old and clustered around the grass, their trunks decaying over time. I don't remember this what it looked like at the beginning, but <laughs> I feel like I know this part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I looked towards Robin, who had sat stood next to an older man, Mayor Lewis. She mentioned through her rambling, who was once my grandfather's friend. Wrinkles creased his face, but his fresh smile kept his youth. They shared a look of almost pity towards me, glancing one more time at the sight before them. <laughs> You can, you can go ahead. Now. Okay. I almost cringed thinking about the amount of work that w- it would take to restore this disaster. The gold. The resources. The energy. This farm was a place for me to rewind. To have a calm and peaceful life. Turns out it would take more than just a few renovations. 
June? Called out Lewis, seeing my dazed state. June, that was my name. A name that reminded you of the summer breeze, of the birds and seagulls, of the drifting oceans. Who says that about <laughs> their own name? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was Grandpa who insisted this name, for whatever reason. I didn't know. He loved it and always claimed it suited me. Back then, it probably had, but now, not so much. I hate it! <laughs> <laughs> Only because of memories of my childhood that came along with it. Okay, I felt that. Okay. And so for Mayor Lewis to call me that, I inwardly shuddered as I faced them. Look, I know it's bad. <laughs> he started, peering at the wreck. Instead of cowering or slumping in defeat, I only lifted my chin and stared back Robin and Lewis with a look of determination. I didn't want them to pity me, to pity the girl that lost her grandfather, the girl who wanted a better life. In this isolated place, Filled of overgrown forests and berry-scented smells, no one knew me here. To them, I was a foreigner, hailed from the city in search of a place to call home. This is a lot of backstory. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> here, I could be whoever I wanted to be. I didn't have to lie in order to fit into a society. I didn't have to go against what my heart truly wanted. Here, I would be me for who I truly was. June, the girl who did not just only lose a grandfather she could barely remember, but the girl who made the most out of it and continued his legacy. Yippee. Robin and Lewis left after that, <laughs> talking absentmindedly about Yoba knows what. <laughs> Their voices faded off into the distance and I approached the tiny ranch, brown and faded over the years. It was a small and cozy space, but satisfied the living contents for one person. There was a dust-covered bud tucked in the corner, a few paintings covered the almost peeling off wallpaper, and an old television that sat in the back of the room. This place, it was Grandpa's. And I oddly felt the feeling of intruding in his own personal space. No one has occupied this area in years, save for, save for Mr. Lewis coming every now and then to clean it, yet still had its comfortable feeling. I threw my only backpack on the ground and slumped onto the bed, sinking in the warm depths of the mattress. Closing my eyes, I let out a sigh. Out of relief, or despair, I didn't know. Tomorrow, I told myself. Tomorrow we'll talk to people around town. Your turn. I dreaded the thought of meeting new people, not knowing what impression I would have to what I have on them. The city has shaped me to become a cold and hateful person. <laughs> Is Jesus. That, I, I guess the city really changed us. Cold and hateful. <laughs> Miss, missing that goodness within me, but I knew that deep down that speckle of life was still there, beckoning to come out. How, how did you do this, Grandpa? I wondered, trying to imagine him smiling, his smiling face as he greeted everyone. I couldn't remember much from my short time there, here as this little girl, but I knew that he was well loved. He had been so, he would have been so disappointed to see what person I had become. I was no longer the little girl he always loved, no longer full of joy and happiness. Maybe we are the perfect uh, match for Sebastian if we're just like cold oh, and bitter yeah. and hateful. <laughs> just hateful of everything. Yeah. After he perfect. died. <laughs> After the he city changed me. Yeah. For like, <laughs> it's like a Batman moment. <laughs> <laughs> Batman arc. Yeah, the city needs me. Doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. After he died, this the city changed me. I wonder if he looked down from whatever from wherever he was and resented this new person. Oddly, a relaxed sensation dawned upon me thinking about him, imagining his warm arms wrapped around me as if I was that little girl again, reassuring me that everything will be okay. My head sank deeper into the cushions, my eyes fluttering to sleep. And as I fell she into that- She needs to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you need a therapist, not a farm. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> oh, you could say that- about... <laughs> Yeah, I'm... but to be fair, you could say that about like anyone who plays Stardew Valley for therapy, that you need a therapist, not a farm. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, you're not- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> and as I fell into his- peaceful slumber, I had the feeling that in this town, I would not be alone. Let's go. The long-ass introduction. Uh, was that all necessary? Maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm up for one more seeing the length of these. Yeah. All right. Chapter one. Let's let's see what we got going I'll on. Again. Meeting. Let's new see. Meeting new people was like a dive into an unknown abyss. At times, you know what to expect from others, other people, and their personalities. Get a feel for their person and how to act with them. And other times, you were completely thrown off. The next morning, when I decided to head into town, I completely felt like an outcast. Like I was a shark thrown into a pool of fish. <laughs> Real. Everyone, they knew each other and kept, them, kept themselves in their own circles. The farmers, the children, the woman who bonded through the years of motherhood, the young adults, still teenagers at heart. All eyes were on me as I walked, scanning up getting me up and down as if analyzing if I was worth joining their little circle. Others offered me warm smiles and friendly ways, while others seemed to ignore me. I kept the look of neutrality. Man, everyone in this town so judgmental. <laughs> what the hell? Dang, it's <clears throat> perfect. Yeah. Damn, we're gonna love it when we meet Sebastian, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, scroll down a little bit. Soon. Yeah, it's soon. Oh, all right. As I near the Alrighty, go ahead. <laughs> As I neared the center of town, I spotted a mass of ginger-like hair at a distance. Ew! Tied back and neat. I almost walked the <laughs> other direction. <laughs> Thinking it was Robin. Yoba. I did not want to enter her rambling again, but stopped when I noticed a younger woman. I approached her warily as she looked up from reading her book under a tree. Hi! Oh, did you want something? She asked nervously, fidgeting a bit. It was obvious my presence made her uncomfortable. <laughs> Slow. Sweat starting to form, <laughs> despite being in the shade. I glanced down at my clothes and wondered how, what I wore, were all old green overall overalls I had found stashed in the dresser. I had glimpsed myself in the mirror before heading out and thought I seemed normal. Medium length chestnut hair that flowed behind me and tan skin. There was nothing unusual. The woman's green eyes met my pale jade ones and I realized it wasn't me, but her. She probably just wasn't used to newcomers in town. Not much, really, I replied. I'm Jude, by the way, the new farmer. I didn't know if I should shake her hand or not, but kept them to myself. Uh, let's see. Penny, I've heard about you. Her voice was soft and sweet. So like her. <laughs> I started to turn after saying, nice to meet you. There was an awkward silence, both of, both of us not knowing what to say. I quickly left, annoyed with myself for such an encounter. And with that, I had left exploring all the different parts of town, every little crevice and corner that I could spot, every nook in a tree or area behind a bush. Occasionally, I spot another citizen and introduce myself. It was difficult at first to warm up to others with my cold aura, but I got used to it. I was about to head into Piers General Store when the door flew open, almost hitting me in the face. Naturally, I let out a scowl and was about to confront the person responsible, but stopped short upon seeing them. You can start here. It was another woman. One that I haven't met yet. Not with ginger hair. I guess, I'm like, thank god, I guess, for my character. <laughs> 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 but purple. With such deep and dark color, one that reminded me of a- What the fuck does that say? Crocus? Crocus? Cro crocus. Okay, that made- that's an actual word. I know what crocus is. <laughs> Excuse me, I said as I stepped to the side and let the woman pass. Her light blue eyes looked over at me as she grinned, a mischie mischievous one that had me straight in my back. Oh, that's right. I heard a new farmer was moving into town. And here I am. What a shame, really, she drowled. I always enjoy exploring those overgrown fields by myself. The twinkle in her eyes told me that there was no doubt that she would not stop pursuing that mission. I'm Abigail. June. <laughs> <laughs> June. <laughs> Abigail looked to be around my age, or even younger. Her pale skin complimented her bright hair and her movements. They were so confident and swift, as if she owned this place. Well, technically she does. <laughs> her dad does. <laughs> yeah. For once, I felt intimidated by this woman. One <laughs> very intimidated. <laughs> 
one whose small frame peered up to my taller one with such confidence. I tried to narrow my eyes at her to gain the upper hand, but she merely smirked and patted my arm. June, she said, my name a simple word on her tongue. She made it seem so low, so unimportant. <laughs> Dang, I think I, I think she's over over reading the situation. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> she's too used to the city vibes, girl. <laughs> Bit on you. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, June, <laughs> get out. <laughs> June. I had to praise her for that, if not for the chill, curl, chill creeping up my spine. I'll see you around. And with that, she so walked emo. away. Yeah, very emo. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna listen to some, uh, fuck, with my chemical romance now. <laughs> that's that's the vibes it's giving me. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, she walked away, her purple waves bouncing along her back. She didn't glance back at me, but I had the impression that she knew that I was watching. Abigail, she was something else. In a good or bad way, I didn't know. But I knew for a fact that she could make me stay here for hell of a lot- Wait, make my stay here a, a hell of a lot more interesting. Man, if I didn't know any better, like, I would feel like this was an Abigail x reader. <laughs> if you never told I me- I can be Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Farm girl! Oh. Oh. Continue. Oh. I- a yell- a voice yelled near me, causing me to look away from Abigail's form. She had disappeared entirely, heading straight for the western forest I had spotted earlier. I craned my head towards the male voice and saw who it was approaching. It was Sam, if I remember correctly, from his blonde hair that was styled with, en with endless amounts of gel and pearl-like smile. He was one of the first few people I introduced myself to. When, when, when did that happen? I wish we saw that. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. That was off screen, I guess. <laughs> Unimportant. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Not emo enough. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not emo enough, you get no screen time. <laughs> Zero. Something about his relaxed aura and friendliness had drawn me in, even if I wanted to stay away. Right, if you want to go ahead. Right. Of course, I would never tell this to anyone. I didn't want people to know that I had a soft spot for people like him. <laughs> even if I felt differently about Robin. His tall figure approached, towering over me as he flashed his perfect teeth. <laughs> for some odd reason, the sun shone in his direction so perfectly, as if displaying his every mo movement. He looked back at where Abigail had left. Oh, I see you met Abigail. One, I lifted a finger at him accusingly, don't call me that. And two, you know her? <laughs> of course, it was a stupid question to ask, but I wanted to know who she was. Sam nodded his head with a grin. Sorry, farm girl, but I can't help it. After all, you are a farm girl. I shook my head in annoyance, but deep down, I sort of liked the little nickname. One less person to call me by my real one. The blonde man only crossed his arms and side whiffs fully, as if contemplating. And ah, uh, yes, I do know the Abigail. She is very snarky, let me tell you. But she can be nice. Well, not to me, but most of the time. And you're friends with her? I asked pointedly. No, I tolerate her, Sam replied. But seeing my confused face had him bursting into laughter. He lean leaned in a bit closer and I instinctively took a step back. Yoba, no. She'd kill me if I said this out loud, but I'm one of her best friends here. God. I made a mental note of this in my head, so there's probably weren't there there probably weren't a lot of people their age in this town. I guess that my options for blossoming friendships were limited, unless I wanted to mingle with the older folk. <laughs> but I really didn't see myself dancing at the saloon with Mayor Lewis on a Friday night. Oh thank God. <laughs> That's, that's a good line. <laughs> and the others? One other. Sam clarified as he walked towards his house and beckoned me to follow him. I hesitated, but then trailed beside him. If you think Abigail's intimidating, then I can't wait for you to meet Sebastian. Uh, do you or me want to be Sebastian? 
Hmm? We're just, sorry. We're just <laughs> you want to be Sebastian, or do you want me to? I can try being Sebastian. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> that name seemed familiar to me. One that floated around at the back of my mind. I never really thought about it until now. Uh, you mean Robin's son? I asked in disbelief as I recalled her words from the day before. The, sh the shy one? Sam snorted as we passed by the same oak tree that Penny was under, and it was now empty. I noticed how he had also glanced at the space to see if it was occupied. Shy is an understatement, farm girl. Try a social. <laughs> True. I was in deep thought as we neared his house, and I was half expecting him to lead me inside, but we stopped just by the bush outside it. It was so abrupt and sudden that I almost bumped into an object. Or someone. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> they were dressed in all black, head to toe, as if colors hadn't existed. An oversized black hoodie that seemed worn out and black jeans. That's me for real. Mm -hmm. Unlike Sam, it was as if the sun's rays wanted to avoid them rather than illuminate them on display. Their black hair was messy, like they had just gotten out of bed. And this is Sebastian, Sam said, putting one arm over his friend's shoulder the latter only scowling in return. The shadows to my light. <laughs> Indeed. If Sam was the sun shining brightly, I ship it. Yeah, that was about if to Sam say. Was the... <laughs> that would be funny if it ended like that. Oh, that would be- <laughs> I, It would be so based. Yes. Indeed. If Sam was the sun shining brightly over the horizon, then Sebastian was the moon that lurked in the darkness. <laughs> I ship it. I ship it. <laughs> Love it. Sebastian turned to look at me, boredom etched on his face. It only continued and displayed no amount of emotion. He didn't seem inclined to offer a friendly greeting until Sam likely smacked him on the arm. Out of all the places you could live, you choose Pelican Town? <laughs> he asked in such an accusing tone. I didn't back down, I only stared at the same defiance. I opened my mouth to retort, but Sam once again hit his friend in the arm. Hard. <laughs> Sebastian hissed and he said, what? <laughs> what? God. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice. Our little June here just moved in. The least you can give her is a nice greeting, right? Sebastian just stared and didn't reply. Right? The dark-haired boy had turned to me this time, and I could clearly make out his features. He was so pale, as if he rarely saw the light of day, and his dark purple eyes had all no emotion. If... If he w was even capable of them, there was a look on his eyes that I couldn't quite put my finger on. He just seemed so... lost. <laughs> Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Tequila! He said in a tone that seemed robotic. Sam coughed and cut in, glaring at his friend. <laughs> what he means is, nice to meet you. You can call me Seb. <laughs> the way Sebastian cringed at his <laughs> nickname showed a tint of hatred in it. For whatever reason, I didn't know. It was easier than saying his three-syllable name. <laughs> if I truly was a horrible person or want to spite him for being so rude, I'd take to calling him that. But I had to admit that I could relate to him with my own situation of disliking my name. Sebastian, I finally said. The name so foreign on my lips. I personally never knew anyone with that name, so it was different. I'll call you Sebastian. Something like gratitude shone in his dark eyes, but as soon as I saw it, it had disappeared and left no trace. It was so sudden that I didn't know if it was real. Great. I'm going ahead inside. <laughs> <laughs> you can continue. Yeah. Sebastian said and gave Sam a, a look that told me that they were silently communicating through whatever friendship they had. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, a gay friendship. I'm <laughs> No. <laughs> no. He made a point not to look at me as he turned and entered Sam's house, slamming the door behind him. Wow, just slam doors in a house you don't fucking own, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Oh, what the f What's that implying? It's like... What the fuck, Kyle? What the fuck did you just say, dude? What the <laughs> fuck, dude? Shut the fuck up, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's them. I looked at Sam once he had left and gave him a similar look of dread. Well, that was something. What's his problem? Sam only... Uh, 
I almost wrote the, yeah, <laughs> Grimace, that's it. <laughs> I was gonna say it as like the name of the fucking purple mascot from McDonald's. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> the only Grimace and scratch the back of his neck. He's his own. He's his own. Sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> He's his own problem. Won't talk to anyone. Stays inside his room. Trust me. There's more to him than just brood and death. I gave him an incredulous. <laughs> I gave him an incredulous look, but he quickly added, "He's a good person, June." I only nodded and said, "You have an interesting friend group." And with that, <laughs> I waved goodbye and, and stalked towards the mountains. Yeah, very interesting. You got like this ray of sunshine and like a, someone that, like a girl that wants to be kind of god, and then you have like a guy that's like fully emo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going back to the darkness of my room. Yeah. Go away. Yeah, he puts on a headphone and he's like, Cause and I will be the night. <laughs> <laughs> I will fall for, for you. It's over, over again. again. <laughs> Oh. Right, I guess we're mining now. Yep. Mining away. <laughs> <laughs> mining away. My, my took a lot more out of me than I expected. You think with all with all you had to do was go down beneath the earth's surface and crack a few rocks into two. Oh, come on. I breathed out, eyeing the tiny green slime across the tiny underground cavern. I had d never done enough physical labor back in the city when all I did was sit in front of a computer screen all day. Me. I, yeah. <laughs> I slightly wish that I worked out more, for facing this creature took more than just a slam to the face with a rusty sword. It was already evening, as light barely shone through the small hole at the surface. I wanted to stop for the day, deeming what materials and gems I acquired was enough. But that small, greedy part of me from the city wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> I nagged, it nagged at me to continue, nudging me, oh yeah, nudging me along deeper into the earth. It was only a few levels down, but I couldn't stop the exhaustion that was weighing down on me. The energy slowly depleting. I can see it now, like our energy bar is like low. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I uh, hope it isn't 2 a.m. Yeah, we just pass out in the mines. Linus <laughs> comes, picks us up. <laughs> Bastion's like, I saw you here. Oh, my prince! <laughs> Tonight will be the- <laughs> okay. Oh, that would be really funny if that happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Real. A, a flash of purple caught my eye as I walked towards it. My hand reached out to grab the purple material, cooled and rough to the touch. An amethyst, I said, the color so bright and unique from the dim walls of the mines. A part of me thought of Abigail and her dis distinguished, distinct hair. I wonder if this was her favorite color. I just, I know now, like, she was, we're gonna give this to her, like, thanks, it, like, it reminded me of your hair, and like, you. And she's gonna go like, wow, thank you, and then eats the rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be terrifying. Yeah, we sit there like dumbfounded. We're like, uh. <laughs> bruh. It probably wasn't worth as much, but I still found it most valuable thing I've had. I pocket it, throwing out a few fibers in my pocket, my space, my my pack for space. There was a commotion coming from the levels above me, and I shuddered, thinking what creature still lurked. I only straightened and continued my trek down, breaking rocks, collecting, repeat. That was a mistake. As for the last rock I hit, had been the final blow for me. If it was, it was as if I lost control of my limbs and had the feeling of passing out. Darkness consumed me, swallowing me up whole until I continued into the unknown abyss. Wow, we just we yeah, that's Sebastian Core. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who wakes him up, wakes her up. Yeah, me too. I guess we'll find out next week. Yeah. <laughs> so what'd you think? <laughs> Um, well, there's definitely lots of uh, lore. I'm in this for the lore. <laughs> Dad, that's definitely why I'm reading this. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, I well, hope to find out more lore soon. Yeah, I, Sebastian's like high up on my list of people I like, so I'm actually really interested in this book. <laughs> Instead of torturing myself Same. with the Shane book. <laughs> that would definitely be torture. Yeah. 
It's gonna take me back to like 2018 when I uh, married Sebastian. <laughs> Wait, was he your first pick in Stardew Valley? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mine was Elliot. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, and then the second time I played, I liked Harvey, so I went for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang, we have different types. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing now that the the two men that I picked, both of them are classified as older bachelors. <laughs> maybe, hmm. maybe it's just the thing I have. Who knows? <laughs> the sign. Yeah. Well, if you guys would like to check out this book, I'll have a link down below, along with uh, Gummy Socials. Uh, they're one heck of an artist. They made my profile picture for my YouTube, so <laughs> definitely check them out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, my name is Phoenix. This is Gummy, and I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.